This is 3 News Daily. Welcome back to 3 News Daily on this Tuesday, March 28th. I'm Stephanie Haney here with your top stories. And today, Governor Mike DeWine ordered the flags to be flown at half staff in Ohio in honor of the victims of yesterday's school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee. Six people were shot and killed at the Covenant Christian School, including three children and three adults, by shooter 28-year-old Audrey Hale. Hale, who police are now describing as transgender, is also dead. Authorities now say that a sense of resentment may have played a role in Hale's deadly attack because Hale was once a student at the school. Overnight, police found Hale's detailed maps of surveillance cameras and entryways into the school. This is a developing story. Stay with us as we continue to gather more information. Now back here at home, the debate over gun control continues. While President Biden made another plea for gun reform, a retired federal agent living in Northeast Ohio believes the situation is much more complicated than it seems. Lydia Aspara has more. As police continue to investigate the latest school shooting in Nashville, the conversation for gun control grows louder and more controversial. John Kilnap, a gun expert, served nearly 30 years with the ATF. I'm not pro-gun, I'm not anti-gun. What I'm for is gun ownership responsible. Kilnap puts the responsibility on the parents who have guns in the home. He says most shootings happen when a child obtains a gun a parent didn't properly store. But in the case of the Nashville shooter, the shooter, a 28-year-old transgender woman, obtained at least two of the weapons legally. Kilnap says intense background checks are a necessity, but he believes that conversation seems to be fading. No, no, it's just, it's fallen by the wayside. People don't want to hear it anymore because they fall back on the Constitution thinking that the government, um, whether that's ATF, the FBI or whatever, wants to take away the guns. That's not the case. President Joe Biden, a longtime supporter of gun control, once again said this. So I call on Congress again to pass my assault weapons ban. It's about time that we begin to make some more progress, but there's more to learn. But I just wanted to send my uh, concern and hearts out to so many parents out there. Students, teachers, and administrators being killed by gun violence. The president and Kilnap both agree. It's out of control. The gun violence of today has reached a level that this country has never seen. Now, Governor DeWine is now proposing that a resource officer be present in every public and private school in Ohio. And if that moves forward, resource officers could be in Ohio as early as this fall. Now, in other legislative news, the Ohio Senate has introduced a bill to repeal the state's death penalty. With bipartisan support, the bill would replace the death penalty with a sentence of life in prison without parole. The bill's supporters believe the death penalty is ineffective, expensive, error-prone, and racially biased. This remains a deeply complicated and deeply divided issue, which has led to the real threat of wrongful executions. This change does not ignore the importance of retribution and punishment but advances a fair criminal justice system in Ohio. Now, if this bill becomes law, Ohio would become the 24th state in the U.S. to repeal the death penalty. Also today, 10 current and former East Cleveland police officers were arraigned in court on criminal charges. Those charges include felonious assault, interference with civil rights, tampering with evidence, obstructing justice, and theft in office. All 10 pleaded not guilty and bond was set at $10,000 for each of them. The indictments have left the department so short-staffed that the city has entered into a partnership with the Highway Patrol to help with patrols. Now, the Stark County Prosecutor's Office is issuing a warning for residents of an ongoing scam as we get closer to tax day. Officials say people have reported receiving a letter from the, quote, tax processing unit of Stark County Public Judgment Records, except that office doesn't exist. So this scam letter claims to be a final demand for unpaid taxes and threatens to seize property from the person who receives it. The Stark County Prosecutor's Office says they never sent this letter, and if you receive one, report it to authorities. We have more details about this scam up on WKYC.com. Now, in driving news, Honda has issued yet another batch of recalls this afternoon. It includes more than 330,000 of the following vehicles. 20 to 2022 20 Odysseys and Passports, 
20 and 2021 pilots and ridge lines. The officials say the heating pads behind both side view mirrors on these vehicles may not be bonded properly and could cause the mirror glass to fall out and increase the risk of a crash. Honda dealers will replace these faulty side view mirrors free of charge. Owners can expect letters about the recall in mid-May. Now to an update for you in the fishing scandal that made headlines across the globe. Both Chase Kaminsky and Jacob Runyon pleaded guilty yesterday to charges connected with filling their fish with weights and fillets in the walleye tournament back in September. Kaminsky and Runyon admitted to cheating, which is a felony in the fifth degree. They also pleaded guilty to ownership of wild animals, a misdemeanor. Their plea deal includes being on probation for six months and they've forfeited the boat they used during the tournament. Now in other news, First Energy now has a brand new president and CEO. His name is Brian Tierney and he's worked in the energy industry for 28 years with the American Electric Power Company. Now as a reminder, just two weeks ago, two former Ohio officials were found guilty in a bribery case involving First Energy. Tierney will take over at First Energy starting June 1st. Now here's some good news. The suspension of the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railroad is now taking a huge step forward. That's because new inspections show it's safe to put the train back on the tracks in Peninsula now, and that's sooner than the park expected. Although people can't get on the train just yet. But the park says moving the train back to the tracks helps them look at the logistics into running rides from Peninsula to Akron. Now you might remember the train was put on hold earlier this month because of erosion. Now last night, a trio of Northeast Ohio performers lit up the national stage. The sisters of the girl group Sorella will move on competing on The Voice. We'll see them next when the knockout stage starts on April 17th. And of course, you can watch that right here on 3. But for now, here's more on their journey to competing on The Voice. <laughs> The perfect pitch. They're called Sorella. Sisters in Italian. And these three from Lexington, Ohio, are singing their way to the next round on The Voice. Surreal. Yeah. Honestly, it was amazing. It was one of the most exciting, happiest experiences of our life. They caught the attention of Blake Shelton and a new judge. Why did they take a chance on Chance the Rapper? Chance really challenged us. Yeah. He had us sing something on the spot, um, which could have been risky because you never know if they can do it or not. But we were able to do it. We've trained all of our lives to be able to just do something quick and on the spot. She's um, not kidding. Maddie is the oldest, then Anna and 15-year-old Bella, who is now finishing school online to pursue her dream. I don't really focus on what I've given up. I just focus on, you know, the goal, which is music and which is performing with my sisters. And all of this is really a dream come true and is really worth everything that I have given up. The Voice isn't their first competition. These women are seasoned pros. Maddie and I, we started getting professionally trained at five, six, and honestly, Honestly, we say like seven or eight with her because that's when she really started vocal lessons, but she was in there at three years old listening to us sing and, and learn professional and classical training. Maddie and Anna performed the anthem for the Cavs in 2012. The older sisters became poised and polished in pageants, including both winning Miss Ohio Outstanding Teen. Come on! Back streets, back the trio appeared on Nickelodeon's America's Most Musical Family. Mystery, lie, lie, liable. They share original music, too. We have written a ton of music. We've released about seven singles, and all of them have a message. All of them are stories that people can relate to. They've been on The Voice's radar for the last five years, thanks to a robust social media following. All of a sudden, Instagram started growing even more, and then Musical.ly came out, which turned into TikTok, and now we have 3.2 million followers, and all of them support our dream. We met them at the Rock Hall and wanted to see who inspired them. Snap after snap, it was their personal American songbook. But it was quick.
queen who got them on Team Chance. Queen was a huge risk and a huge challenge, but we were so ready for it. I mean, they are legends and we know every single Queen song. We loved all the intricate and overlapping parts that some people thought were a little weird. We love to be weird. That's our thing. No matter what happens on The Voice, their three million TikTok fans will support them every step of the way. Monica Robbins, 3 News. How cool. Now, in more entertainment news, did you know Just that the current number one movie on Netflix was filmed in part in Lakewood and Chagrin Falls back in 2018? It's a thriller called I See You, and it came out in 2019 starring Helen Hunt. Now, we're not going to give away any spoilers here. You can Google that if you want a preview of the storyline. But here are a few spots to watch for. In the opening, there's an aerial shot of Chagrin Falls that moves over the bridge and looks toward Grove Hill, and most of the action is sent inside a lakeshore house on Edgewater Drive in Lakewood. They also shot scenes in Linwood Park in Vermilion and at Cerno's Farm in Auburn Township. So if you want to learn more about the actual movie, we've got the trailer up on WKYC.com. I'm going to add that to my Netflix list. Now, as we continue to celebrate Women's History Month, we want to honor the hardworking ladies who kept American tanks rolling and bombers flying in the heat of World War II. 80 years later, we take a look at these incredible icons. NBC's Andrea Mitchell reports. From the factory floors to recruiting posters and songs, Rosie, the Riveter. few women in American history are as iconic as Rosie the Riveter. How old were you when you started working in the factory? Well, I just graduated out of high school. Putting their lives on hold to build the bombers and tanks that helped win the war. These Rosies, most in their 90s, four older than 100, are now being honored for their service. We worked like heck to beat the guys' butts out of there for doing what they did to our boys out in Pearl Harbor. From a national necessity, starting a revolution for women in the workplace and proud of it. Up until 1941, it was a man's world. And they didn't realize how capable women are. There's nothing I don't think that a woman uh, can't do. It's up to the woman whether she wants a career raised in a family or whether she wants to be an astronaut. We have that choice now. Today, invited to Washington on an honor flight usually reserved for World War II veterans, dedicated to the Rosies. Asking tour guides to let them pose in front of the suffragette statue in the Capitol and visiting the World War II Memorial. We weren't doing it for honors or rewards. We were doing it to save our country and save our brothers and uncles and aunts, whoever were working. Doing all that crappy work in a factory so they can put their lives on the line, it was worth it to have them come back. A group proud of all they accomplished in the war and for women for years to come. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News, Washington. What an incredible time for those women to be alive and doing everything they, they could do. You know, back in those times, of course, women couldn't enlist in the armed forces. Incredible women supporting the people who went overseas and gave the ultimate sacrifice in some cases. Incredible. Thank you for sharing that story with us. All right, now let's turn to our question of the day. The Browns owners, Jimmy and Dee Haslam, say they don't want to build a new Browns football stadium. They want to renovate, and their renovation plans likely will not include a dome. So we want to know how you feel about the dome debate. Would you like one or not, and why? Post your comment to the WKYC Facebook page, and we'll talk about it during What's New at 4 o'clock. I'm saying retractable dome. I think that would be nice. All right. Tonight, we will get to see something that happens once in a lifetime. It's a very uncommon planetary alignment. It's happening just after sunset. Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, Uranus, and Mars will all be visible in the western sky. They won't be in a straight line. You'll see them in an arc shape from just above the horizon to much higher in the sky. Now, today is your best chance to see the planets in this rare alignment. And, of course, they won't look exactly like that. They'll look like sparkly little dots in the sky, but you get the idea. Very cool if you get the opportunity to check it out. Thanks for being with us for today's edition of 3 News Daily. We hope you have a great Tuesday. Appreciate you no matter where you're watching or listening to us. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more of your top stories from Northeast Ohio.